my name is Dr. Kate Truitt, and I am here today with Damian Gonzalez, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist, and he is also specifically trained in working with the LGBTQ community and providing what's called affirmative therapy. Uh, this is a very unique time during the global pandemic that we are all surviving, and you know, Damian, specifically for the community that you serve, this has some additional layers and nuances because this is the second pandemic, so to speak, that many of these individuals have experienced. And a moment ago, you mentioned to me this idea that there's a, a point of reference that is very different. And I would just like to invite you to speak to that when you say, when we look at the LGBTQ community, why is mm -hmm. there a different point of reference? Well, I think, Kate, there's, there's a point of reference um, coming from looking at from AIDS and HIV and where that's been in the last 30 years and where we're dealing with, you know, the COVID-19 now, where before it was um, this unknown um, gay cancer that started going around. And like, like most pandemics, you don't know where they start. You don't know what the thing is. I think also the difference, a big difference is now we're connected electronically. So we get access to information sooner when before, uh, this specifically this demographic that we're looking at and basically the world at that time we we didn't know where it was coming from we didn't know what was happening and a lot of people were very directly affected by it. and even you know I think back to the 80s and 90s which mm -hmm. I was alive and mm -hmm. the lack of connection communication is one thing but there's also this additional piece where i mean even president reagan didn't say the word aids or hiv in national media until the pandemic had been going on for how many years so yeah it, it wasn't it, he never said that in this whole entire administration that oh, came wow. later and also we, you know we didn't have the internet we didn't have you know there was a lack of a lot of resources um, usually communities would meet out in, you know, areas or the gay ghettos, as we used to call them. And, you know, the first people that were really noticing, if you really like look at um, what was kind of going on, the first people that really knew about there was something going on or a pandemic were putting pictures in a drugstore window and like a pharmacy in San Francisco because they were like recording that these things were starting to happen. And then it started to go really like wildfire after that, where more and more cases of that started to show up. But again, you weren't able to track it and you didn't have the resources like you have today. And it wasn't, and it was something that was very hush hush at the time. It was a gay man's cancer. But then it's like, you know, for everyone else, it was like, oh, that's interesting. And then flipping the page to like the next page in the newspaper rather than this is something that we're all going through. It's so happening right people. now. Mm -hmm. part, I, I wonder if there's a little bit of this experience of what's happening right now with the coronavirus pandemic is what should have happened then, but didn't. And living through this now, you know, individuals in the LGBTQ, but specifically gay men who have survived and been through this experience in such a deep, painful way, are looking at the world going, why didn't you show up for us the way you're showing up now? Where mm -hmm. were you? I mean, well, that's it was a marginal that community, you know, yeah. it was a yeah. marginal community and, and the same thing that we're struggling now with, we're not really getting any federal support with it. You know, we don't really have people that are really taking a lead. It was like people formed ACT UP so that we had some people that could actually go and rally and take some kind of lead and people were getting together. It was like, a, I mean, it was a thing. It was another community that would like kind of, they, they all kind of tried to do their best to kind of come together and it was part of the uprising. So, and that, you know, I just want to wrap us up here because Damien, I think that's one of the things that's so amazing about the work that you're doing, the work that D Dr. Megan Mansfield is doing about bringing together these workshops, being, you know, really present in the community. I know you're a member of LAGPA here in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and, you know, being at the front and center of how do we support this community navigating this difficult time. I mean, I know you're launching a sexual assault survivor group that's specific to the LGBTQ community. And we're just, we're seeing a lot of trauma that's coming up while people are in isolation. And again, the specific nuances of the community here that has survived an epidemic pandemic, whether they've survived it themselves, but, and, or they've heard the stories from the survivors and those encodings and how do we help, you know, transcend that neurologically and which is a core part of the work we do. It's an honor to ha have you with us today. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.